Uh, Die Hand, Die Verlist is next. Episode 14, Glenn Morgan and James Wong. Kim Manners directs it. She comes back a lot. I love the camera work this season. Just some notes. There are some really interesting shots. Satanists in the parent-teacher conference, witchcraft, work body consecration. Consecration. Desecration. They prey on children's innocence. A uh, teacher at the high school is killing people. She has a heart and a pair of eyes in her desk drawer. That must smell. I, a student named Shannon has an episode in class. It turns out that she thought she was part of a ritual with some fucked up shit that's very bohemian grovey <laughs> um, where she had three babies and they were sacrificed for this religion or whatever they say she was sacrificed for him for them so she's a scapegoat they'll pin all her their crimes on her after she commits suicide this is an even creepier ep than the last one shannon's dad claims her memories were mixed up due to the post hypnosis he says no one ever abused her but they still performed rituals on people without their consent so yeah the teacher kind of saves Mulder and Scully from being murdered at the end which is interesting and leaves them staring at each other in confusion at the end there's no resolution just weird shit in that episode uh, then we move on to Fresh Bones which is a really good episode from Howard G Gordon written by him and directed by Rob Bowman military episode with de grave des desecration lots of desecration this season there's also voodoo and frogs. I'm seeing more connections in the season between the episodes. More witchy stuff in this ep. I love the effect of voodoo guy moving his hand through Scully's hand to grab her throat. That was impressive. Cue the clip. Then we are at one of the best episodes also, Colony, episode 16, David Duchovny comes in to write for the first time with Chris Carter. They make a great duo. Nick Mark directs two-parter, Aliens Again. Mulder Stoli, Mulder Stoli, Mulder's story is touched upon again. We open with him in the hospital, the whole two weeks earlier backtrack, not my fave episodic device, but here we go. Finally, Skinner is back. Thanks, David and Chris. I missed him. He's on Mulder's ass again. <laughs> Government-created clones are being targeted. They got strategic positions in medical establishment, destroying the country's immune system. Mulder's sister returns. Her father was killed by the other alien who's tracking the clones down. Alien baby! Mulder's doppelganger shows up at Scully's as Mulder calls and she picks up to be continued. Good episode, not my favorite, but a good dive into Mulder's world. Then we have Endgame, which is more interesting. Episode 17. Frank Spotnitz wrote it. Rob Bowman directed it. Samantha was a clone the whole time, but Mulder is told she's alive in the showdown with the killer and him. Scully warns the hospital staff to take Mulder in that he was exposed to a retrovirus and to keep him cold she ends up saving his life the virus is alien of course did you find what you were looking for says scully i found something i thought i'd lost faith to keep looking says Mulder. good emotional episode f18 gets back to basics it's really interesting fearful symmetry written by steve dejarnet dejarnat whatever and james whitmore jr this episode oh he directed it um, this app takes place at a zoo, and the question of animals being in prison versus free in the wild is brought up as a rapid elephant causes murder and mayhem in, Ohio, in Idaho. Mulder and Scully work on the case, getting to know the zookeeper and naturalist involved. Animal abuse is discovered as well as the possibility of alien babies, or pregnancies in this case. Interesting topics to discuss. Nothing really relevant to get into, but a really interesting episode. Dead Calm is next, episode 19. We're rolling right through. Howard Gordon wrote it. Rob Bowman directed it. Wormholes. Mulder and Scully end up aging rapidly. Some good makeup is shown there. Um, on a military ship in Norway, which is the X-Files. Good aging makeup, I said. A nice moment when Scully tells Mulder she was at peace with death because of her experience in the coma before. 
Eventually, old Mulder, Mulder and Scully are rescued from the ship, which they worried they'd die on. Of course, the ship sinks afterwards, so no evidence. Uh, unfortunate. Okay, this is the creepiest episode. Not creepiest. <laughs> no. This is the hardest episode for me to watch, because I don't do well with these subjects. But episode 20 is Humbug. Written by Darren Morgan, directed by Kim Manners. Circus Sideshow episode, not my favorite topic. Parasitic twin is killing people. This was nightmare fuel. Those are my notes. Uh, it was giving uh, malignant. Malignant was giving this in res retrospect. But anyway, uh, we move on. Episode 21, the Kalisari. Okay, the, by the way, the performances were really good in that episode. It was very hard for me to watch because I don't do well with that subject. But I like the guy from Twin Peaks. He was pretty funny uh, as the hotel guy uh, in the previous episode. Vincent Ciavelli is always good in whatever he does. So I really enjoyed the episode for the performances, but I could not watch a lot. It, it was hard to watch. But anyway, episode 21, The Kalasari. Another great episode with some witchy stuff. Written by Sarah B. Charno again. Directed by Michael Vehar. More witchy stuff. Romanian family with strange murders. First, the youngest son is manipulated by a balloon to a train track where he's killed. Then the father, then the grandmother who's into witchy stuff is hurt. Charlie, the young son in the family, claims that Michael did it. Michael is his stillborn twin. Another twin problem, of course, who ends up taking over as Charlie. And then they do an exorcism and then all is well. <laughs> but not a lot of real world stuff that we can go over there. So episode 22. F. Emasculata. This was written by Chris Carter and Howard Gordon, directed by Rob Bowman. Dean Norris is in this app. Oh my gosh, and it's so funny that it's right before the app written by Vince Gilligan, but <laughs> interesting. Uh, preparing for his role as Hank on Breaking Bad because he's playing a cop. Shady CDC conducts a secret quarantine of a prison for a flu-like illness. Scully manages to get the deets, though. She tells Mulder, and they try to get to the bottom of it. What do you know? The pharmaceutical company, similar to Pfizer and possibly Merck, was behind the outbreak. Pink pharmaceuticals. Problem. Reaction. Solution. Through a bug that attacks the immune system. Another parasite episode. You can't protect the public by lying to them, I wrote down as Mulder's quote. And here's the scene. The contagion. What is the exact nature of the contagion? It's deadly. It kills within 36 hours. One escaped convict was infected, he's dead now. The other man may be infected, and he's on the loose. Does anyone know how it's communicated? Whether it's a virus or bacteria? Or... We just know that over a dozen men have died from it, and it appears to be highly contagious. Then you don't know much, Agent Moore. Why weren't we told the truth? We didn't know the truth. What we knew would only have slowed you down. But innocent people could be infected. What you knew could have prevented that. Oh. In 1988, there was an outbreak of hemorrhagic fever in Sacramento, California. The truth would have caused panic. Panic would have caused lives. We controlled the disease by controlling the information. You can't protect the public by lying to them. It's done every day. I won't be a party to it. What about you? You're a party to it already. How many people are being infected while you stand here not doing your job? 10, 20? What's the truth, Agent Mulder? Great makeup on the blisters on the face, I said. Interesting topic that feels really relevant right now. Skinner, when he faces up to his role in the cover-up, says this is just the beginning. So we know we're in for a ride. And it continues with Soft Light, episode 23, one of the best episodes of the season, written by none other than Vince Gilligan, directed by James Contner. Vince Gilligan is in the house, should be fun. Tony Shalhoub is guest star, bigger names this season. He is accidentally killing people with a power using light. They say dark matter, and I freak out because I know, <laughs> I know Breaking Bad, so it's so weird watching back. Morley Tobacco exec goes missing. Love how they brought that brand back. Dr. Ch Chester Banton ends up being taken by the government so they can study him. Sad ending. But a very good episode touching on something very real, which is government experimentation on humans, which we'll see continuously. 
um, which leads us into Our Town, which is one of the worst episodes I've seen of this series. It was a chore to get through. It was a chore to get through. I could not even, like, uh, I could only odd. Uh, written by Frank Spotnitz. No offense to you, but this was not it for me. Kim Manners directed it. Nobody could save this episode. The music couldn't save this episode. It was the bottom of the list. It's not very interesting to me. Feels like filler. Doesn't really move the story forward. Worst step of the season by far. Like if you put this at the end, you you sent this to the Emmys. Like here, consider consider this show. They'd be like, no, I'm good. <laughs> We're not going to consider that show. <laughs> but yeah, it it just was like paint by numbers, boring, phoned it in. Performances weren't even on, on par. It was just sad. Episode 25 gets the show back on its feet, thankfully. And it, is, it just happens to be co-written by David Duchovny again, who's really just, you know, really good at that. Uh, Anasazi. And it's uh, co-written by, again, David Duchovny and Chris Carter. R.W. Goodwin comes back to d direct this finale. The Lone Gunmen are back. We're already on, you know, good footing. CSM had a scene. The stakes are high on a global level. We see the conspiracy, like, coming together and all the pieces coming together and the puzzle. Already much better than the last episode, UFO files back to aliens, DOD files prove that the government knew about existence of aliens, they're encrypted in the Navajo language, helicopter, fun. Hey, that's perfect, because there's a helicopter later. Uh, Skinner, I missed him too, he tries to talk to Mulder about the files and Mulder hauls off on him. Sheesh, this episode makes me hate the last one even more, haha. -ha. <laughs> Scully is called in to discuss Mulder. She's questioned by the higher-ups on her relationship with him and if she's complicit in the same behavior, you know, because she's supposed to be, like, watching him, right? She's supposed to be in control of him and, like, keeping him, you know, from getting in the way, you know? But she's not doing that anymore. She's, she realizes her role is different. CSM visits Mulder's father, Bill, and we find out that he knows about the files. CSM tells him to deny involvement. They go way back. Fox meets with his father and hears about what he did. Before he can go into detail, he heads to the bathroom to take pills, is shot and dies. High stakes! We killed his father. Like, what the hell? Um, Mulder calls Scully first and explains that he was shot and killed by Krychek. She tells him to leave, but he doesn't want to leave the body there she takes him in and helps him work through everything she's his comfort she cares about him so much lets him lay down and rest scully ends up shooting him in the shoulder when he points Krychek's gun at him to keep him from being implicated for his father's murder they have a navajo man help encrypt the ufo files he was dosed with drugs to make him erratic because he was too close to the truth Something else LSD related. He thanks her for taking care of him. Uh, Sazi is referred as a, an ancient civilization, which is very similar to the Anunnaki, which my mother will appreciate. Uh, she will really love this episode later. And then we have Operation Paperclip mentioned by Scully, who says there were experiments done on humans. And Mulder corrects her and says, no, there are alien bodies in this box car I'm looking at right now in New Mexico. And one has a smallpox vaccination scar. So then CSM arrives via helicopter and Mulder is gone. That's the end of season two. Having said all that, let's get to the meat of the situation. What are my top five episodes? Number five, I'm going to go with, oh dear. All right, top five. Here we go. Number five, D Hand, D Verlist, because it was just interesting it had me the whole time the, the performances were amazing the writing was really good number four Dwayne Barry because it sets us on a, a strange course with Scully and her storyline some really great acting and, and interesting moments and again it was nominated for an Emmy it can't be that bad number three irresistible just a creepy atmospheric episode may not be like super relevant but had some great moments good moment with Mulder and Scully just really good episode number two 
is F. emasculata because it gets into the meat of the story and you know what's going on behind the scenes and how the truth will not really be able to get to the bottom of because there are other forces at work. So that's an interesting one. And also the fucking pharmaceutical company thing. That's fucking disturbing and realistic. And I love Skinner and CSN being in it. And it's just really good. And then number one, it's got to be the finale. Anasazi, great world building, global issues addressed with the conspiracy. And it's heading into the third season. And we're just... The show really knows what it is and knows what it's trying to say. And it's really hard to, like, not have Red Museum in this countdown. But, you know, there are only so many... There are 25 episodes. And I think those are the best ones that I would put up and say, this is the show. So anyway, thank you so much for listening and watching this second episode. Next stop, season three. Bye-bye.